What is LIGO? LIGO stands for Laser Interferometer Gravitational Waves Observatory. It is an extremely accurate interferometer. There are a few of them right now in the world, and they are responsible for detecting gravitational waves. When you think about it, it's crazy. Like in order to detect gravitational waves, you should be able to tell the difference of 10 to the power of 9, negative 18 meter. That's like one part in 10,000 part of the width of a single proton. Today, we're gonna do a super simplified experiment to detect sound waves. We're gonna do it in Hua Chong's own photonics lab in the Science Research Center. Come and join me. Hi guys, this is a basic setup for the interferometer. Let's check it out. Over here, we have a laser generator. This is a beam splitter. We have two mirrors. One mirror is attached on a fixed stand, and the other one is what I call balloon mirror, which is just a mirror being taped on a stretched balloon membrane. We really want to make this really sensitive to the sound waves. Over here is the intensity logger to record the intensity of the interference pattern. And that's it. So how does it work? Well, the laser generator will generate a laser beam toward this beam splitter. The beam will be split into two perpendicular beams heading toward the mirrors. Once reflected by the mirrors, they will head toward back to the beam splitter. At this beam splitter, they will be combined to form a final laser beam heading toward the intensity longer. And in, in this final beams, we can view the interference patterns. So when the sound waves travel here, it will vibrate the membrane of the balloon, causing the mirror position to change slightly. And this change in the mirror position will lead to a change in the interference pattern which will be picked up by this intensity logger. So let's see how sensitive it is. So this is the interference pattern formed on a white screen. To demonstrate how sensitive it is, I will try to touch the table gently and we will see the interference pattern shifted. Touching. Touching. Did you see the interference pattern shifted? How about sound waves? I will try to shout as loud as I can and be sure to watch the interference patterns closely. Hi! Again. Hi! So imagine two black holes collide over there and they create sound waves. In reality, they don't create sound waves, they create gravitational waves. But for the purpose of demonstration, we just gotta stick with sound waves. So the speaker over there will play a short burst of sound and the sound will be picked up by the first interferometer over here because it's closer to the source. And just a few milliseconds later, the second interferometer with the exact setup will pick up the sound as well. And because we know the exact location of the two interferometers and the time difference of the detection, we can work out exactly where the source is coming from. So let's get started. Okay. Let us check the data from our data loggers. The sound waves vibrate the balloon mirror, causing a shift in the interference patterns. This will result in a change in the interference pattern, and thus a change in the intensity recorded by the loggers. As you can see here, the first interferometer picked up the sound as 20.171 seconds, and the second interferometer picked up the sound waves 7 milliseconds later. Since the speed of sound is roughly 343 meter per second, we can work out the difference in distance to be 2.4 meters. Let us review our experiment setup in 2D. We have a speaker at an unknown location. We have two interferometers, which are 3.6 meters away from each other. The speaker is played and the sound waves travel A meters to the first interferometer and B meters 
to the second interferometer. As we analyzed the data from the logger, we knew that the sound waves traveled to the first interferometer 7 milliseconds earlier than the second interferometer. As we have worked out the math, we have the path difference B minus A to be 2.4 meters. Can we conclude the location of the source, in this case, the speaker? No, because all we have is the path difference B minus A, which is 2.4 meters. I can easily choose other location will result in the same 2.4 path difference, as you can see with B code minus A code in the diagram. Hmm, if we plot all possible location of the source that can result in the same path difference, we can form a hyperbola as dotted in red. So the speaker can lie anywhere on that hyperbola. Well, the trick is to add the third interferometer. By using the method described earlier, you can draw another hyperbola that the speaker must lie on. Thus, the intersection between these two hyperbola is the location of the source. Now that is with a 2D case. Remember, to find the location for 2D case, we need three interferometers. And for 3D case, we need four interferometers. But why? Well, for 3D case, with only two interferometers, you can only conclude that the source must lie on a cone. If you have three interferometers, you can narrow the source position to be on a line of intersection between the two cones. And if you have four interferometers, the source must lie on a single point of intersection of three cones. This is precisely why gravitational wave scientists push to construct multiple LIGO interferometer around the world to pinpoint the location of the source. I hope you have a glimpse of how LIGO works and how to pinpoint the exact location of gravitational waves. The work of scientists behind this project is phenomenal. They spent years making breakthrough to increase the sensitivity of this instrument. There are surely many lessons to be learned on life and science from these scientists. Thank you for watching.